Today is International Day of the Girl, a day to empower girls all around the world, but also bring attention to some of the challenges that they face. So in our checklist today, today's checklist, we're going to go through the numbers that women need to know to take care of their physical and their mental health. And here to help is NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Tara Narula. Dr. Narula, good morning. Good morning. I think it's so important, you know, especially with young girls, to establish habits early. Absolutely. Yes, I have two young girls, 11 and 7, so this is personal. Um, mm -hmm. And adolescence can be a really tough time for a lot of young women, but it's also a time to lay that foundation for healthy habits that are going to make you a healthy and adult. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the first thing to remember, and this is right in my area, is that cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death for women. So how do we start those healthy habits early? Well, first of all, exercise we all know is important. So young girls should be getting about 60 minutes of cardio on a daily basis and can mm -hmm. work in some muscle and strength training. Oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, how young are we talking about? Yeah. We're starting like young, like five, six. I mean, you hmm. should be getting your kids out there and doing activities um, and, you know, have them walk instead of being pushed in the stroller mm. if they can. Mm -hmm. um, also, you want to think about healthy body image. It's a time where a lot of young girls pay attention to that. And so, you know, I'm a cardiologist. My husband's a plastic surgeon. We're very careful about how we talk about that with our daughters. And we focus on a healthy, strong body. And that means a body mass index, a height weight ratio that falls between the fifth as you can see there, an 85th percentile. That's how we grade it for girls. As adults, we talk about BMI with numbers, like 25 or less is healthy. Right. Um, also about stress habits. You want to talk about mindfulness, meditation, yoga, breathing exercises, and then avoiding substances. We know that tobacco, marijuana, vaping, alcohol, all of these things are important. Most kids will start using tobacco. Uh, most adults who use tobacco started before the age of 18. Mm -hmm. So really healthy habits to set you up for heart success down the road. You know, yesterday was World Mental Health Day. And, and ment we know mental health can affect your physical uh, well-being. Uh, how do we start early on helping our girls manage that stress and from whether it's social media or, or peer pressure as they go forward? Yeah, Alan, it's so important that we talk about this because half of all mental health disorders really start before the age of eight, at 14. Wow. And many of them go undiagnosed, they fly under the radar, and they're undertreated. And so it has to be on our radar as parents, as teachers, and peers. And one of the important ways to help is to keep girls connected so they don't feel isolated and lonely. And that can be through peer groups, leadership organizations, finding role models at schools, teachers. Parents need to really pay attention to warning signs. Be plugged into what's going on with your kids. Talk to them. Ask them how they feel. Therapy. I mean, I'm a huge advocate for therapy yeah. for yeah. adults and kids if necessary. Um, and also, we want to think about social media. Right. So, you know, the Surgeon General put out a report. I know he was here yesterday mm -hmm. talking about the dangers of social media. And mm -hmm. so many of our kids are using them. If you use social media as a young kid, studies have shown for more than three hours, you're at a 50 percent increased risk Gosh. for things mm -hmm. like depression and anxiety. You mentioned warning signs. What are some of the warning signs you should be looking so at? So clearly, if kids are kind of pulling away, they're they're more isolated, um, they're not engaging in their daily activities, they're sleeping more, they're, they're basically losing interest in a lot of things that maybe gave them pleasure. Um, those can be warning signs. But sometimes, it, Al, it's just as easy as sitting down and talking yep. to your kids mm -hmm. um, and letting them know that it's okay to talk about anxiety, that they feel nervous about things, or that they feel sad. Real quickly on reproductive health for mm -hmm. young women. At what age are they supposed to to start getting their first well woman visit? That's a great question. And we all think about that first UIN visit as mm -hmm. women. And, you know, pap smears are not recommended until 21 or, be, or after. But the American College of OBGYNs actually suggests that girls start to see an OBGYN between the ages of 13 and kind yeah. of 18. Mm -hmm. And that is really to build that trusted relationship. Uh, it's not about a pap smear or pelvic mm -hmm. exam. It's about talking about menstruation, for example, what's normal, what to do if they have pain. Most girls will start menstruating between 12 and 14. Mm -hmm. To talk about gender issues, safe sexual practices, STDs, one important conversation is around the HPV vaccine. We know that HPV is a preventable, if we treat it with the vaccine, we can prevent oropharyngeal cancer, cervical cancers. 85% mm -hmm. um, of us will get infected with HPV. And so the recommendation is that starting at ages 11 to 12, girls can get their first dose, followed six months later with a second dose. If you start after age 15, it's about three doses. But these are really important conversations to have, and a GYN is a safe place for a lot of girls to have those conversations that they may not feel comfortable talking to parents about. Okay. Dr. Narula, that was just so helpful. Thank you so much. Covered a lot of ground there. Yeah. Thank you, Doc.
Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.